now we're ready to start inking. Um, it's actually going to be interesting for y'all to see because I'm going to be using a G pen, which I'm sure you've heard lots of manga creators use. So uh, stay tuned and we'll get going. Okay, now that we're ready to start inking, uh, I mentioned that I'm going to be using a G pen. Had to find the frame really quick. Um, and I kind of already did a I guess a value study for a lot of these characters so that I know where the lines should go. Um, for example, because of this, I know that I shouldn't ink Thardito's cheeks and that I shouldn't ink the outline of Osito, um, at least not very much of it. So that's why it's always good to make these beforehand so that you're not kind of lost whenever you get a little further than you thought you might. So. I'm going to be using, looks like Higgins ink, it's waterproof. So that means if I did decide I wanted to make a watercolor piece out of it, check it out, I already got ink on myself. But that's how you know you're an artist, is you get ink on yourself instantly. Um, <laughs> that's why I have paper towels, it's fine. So in general, since I'm right-handed, I'm going to want to start at the left here and go to the right. And I have a hand guard here so that I don't smudge anything especially not so much beyond repair because that has happened to me before. This is why G pens can be not really worth it. <laughs> okay, now we're going. There we go. I have a decent amount of practice with this pen. Um, so I actually find it pretty easy to maneuver. I can get really light lines and some heavier ones. But if you're unsure, that you're gonna like nib pens, you know, just don't stress about it. Um, if you wanna give it a try, you could try a, they call it a school pen, um, or you can even try a spoon nib. I know that sounds like I'm talking crazy, but I promise that's a thing. Um, they're a little easier to maneuver. They don't have as many variations in line. See, check that out. <laughs> but they're also, they also have the added benefit of being beginner friendly. For this top panel, I didn't do this, but a lot of the time whenever I ink, I actually start by drawing panel lines. Um, this one's not as necessary for that, but some of the later ones will be. And it just kind of tells you, okay, stop here. Don't ink any further than this. Another reason to have a guard is to catch errant ink. It is being extremely messy right now for some reason. I know that y'all probably don't believe me, but I did this like less than an hour ago and it didn't act like this, but that's okay. As you can see, a lot of these lines are really thin um, I do tend to start with thin lines just because it's a lot easier to add thickness to a line than remove thickness from a line. A lot easier. If you're working digitally, it doesn't matter as much, but when you're working traditionally, you really have to think about a lot of that stuff. I'm trying not to give the salmon too many features because I don't know if you've ever been watching a cartoon and been like, if these animals can talk. Why can't these other animals talk? It's, it's kind of a problem that happens a lot in animation, especially. Um, but if you give the creatures that aren't sapient uh, fewer features, that actually happens less. Salmon have way more dots than this, but I decided I was just going to basically freckle them all. Inking is a good time to kind of turn your brain off and just vibe. I don't normally work in silence like this, but you do what you gotta do. <laughs> it's a good time to throw on a podcast or put on a show in the background. Because you're actually not making a ton of decisions here. Um, you've already made a lot of those decisions during the sketching stage. And what is art if not just a whole bunch of decisions? I 
you know, still can't decide what to eat for dinner. Mm. Fascinating. You probably noticed I'm trying to make the salmon all look a little bit different from one another, but not trying overly hard to do so. I'm actually a sucker for background elements that are all just a little bit different from each other, but are pretty similar. You see this a lot in, especially digital artists' work. Uh, somebody puts sunflowers in the background and one of them's more orange than another. Or fish like this that are all just a little bit different. I see it happen a lot with butterflies and stuff too. Uh, Lois is actually a good example of that. Her background elements are always just a little bit different. It adds kind of an organic look. One thing I haven't been doing is filming the eyes in, even though I did previously decide I was going to do that, so I'm going to have to go back and do that, but that won't take long. For any more background noise, you could always come and check out some DVDs up here. I've got like billions of them. And our DVD guy is really good at getting them in quick. Like, I'm pretty sure we had noped the day it came out. It was great. He actually had to keep it under surveillance. No, I don't know what he did. But <laughs> sometimes we get them like the day they come out. It's really cool. Plus, you can put in a request. And if he doesn't already have it, he'll probably get it if it's possible for him to get it. Or at worst, they'll get it in our library room for you. So if there's something you want to put on in the background, we've got DVDs, we've got CDs, we've got all sorts of stuff. We've even got audiobooks on Libby and Hoopla. Just in case your Spotify wrapped called you out, like it did me. Might have made these fish too cute. Are we gonna feel bad enough for the bear to be okay with the fish? Who knows? Being filmed is actually making me not put my nose two inches from the paper. Because sometimes I sure do that. And even some more rocks over here. Kind of trying to keep my lines angular. Since a lot of this panel is kind of fluid shapes. I try not to turn the page too much whenever I have viewers, but what can you do? Sometimes you just gotta turn the page. When I'm drawing on my own, I flip this page around like crazy. It would be maddening to watch. I actually see some artists online film speed paints, but they just record their screen so you can see how often they rotate. It's a lot. And if you need to rotate your paper, just know that you're not alone. I'm gonna set this aside for just a second, but you gotta clean it up to make sure it doesn't get all gross and stop up on you because I'm going to use a brush pen to define some of these panels. So I actually like to, now that I'm thinking about it, use a pencil to make them straight and then use a pen to just trace over what I've done. It makes it look a little more organic. And I like to have that kind of texture and homemade look to my comics, but you are more than welcome to do it however you want. I know lots of people that just go straight out of a pen when they have a ruler. If you do that, I would recommend that you actually flip it over so that the bevel edge is facing the paper, because then you won't get ink smears all over everything. One thing I've been asked a few times by people is, how do you keep your lines straight on your panels? 
Uh, by that, they don't mean how do you trace your pencil down a ruler, but they mean how do you keep it straight in relation to the rest of the page. And honestly, it's a good question. Uh, some people can eyeball it and just know. Uh, my father's actually really good at that. Well, other people like me usually have to line their ruler up with the edge of the paper or use a T-square uh, to make sure it's perfectly straight and then go from there. There is very little that's more heartbreaking than getting a perfect line down only to lift your ruler away and realize you've drawn a perfect diagonal line. It also helps to use a clear ruler like I'm doing here. Now I'm actually going to go in with my brush. This is a Kuretake brush of some kind. Um, <clears throat> I believe it's just a pocket pen, but I could be wrong. Uh, these are really distinctive though. You see them a lot in uh, Japanese dollar stores and you can find them on Amazon as well. As you can see, I'm just tracing this line very carefully. It's not going to be 100% straight, but I don't want it to be 100% straight, so that's okay. As long as it's close enough, that's what I like. I have a friend who draws a lot of comics, and he just goes for it. He doesn't even start with a ruler or anything, but his comics always look great, so... Follow your heart, honestly. Do what you think looks good. I'm going to go back in with the G pen now. Now, like I said before, I'm not actually going to leave it outside for the bear. I am, however, going to go back and finish up this panel because I didn't figure out where the panels were going to be first and didn't go far enough. We said we get it out now, not later. I can go ahead and actually do any of the motion lines or sound effects and speech bubble type things, if any. Um, like I have a sigh here. Um, I do this because for these backgrounds where there's more than one element, it's nice to know where to lay off the detail. You go ahead and have him kind of holding his little arm with his missing paw. I've just decided to put bandages over it. I don't know where he got the bandages, but he has them. And it makes it look a little sadder. Now remember, for him, I'm just kind of sticking to the inside lines. Because I just decided that that would look good. Now because we're going to see part of his back here, I'm going to go ahead and define part of his head. Same with here, actually. Doradito. A Doradito actually is a kind of bird, but um, they only look a little bit like this bird. I just like them. This bird's like, that's the saddest thing I ever saw. These backgrounds here may look complicated, but it's really not. A lot of backgrounds, um, actually one of my, another one of my comic friends actually said, I love doing comic backgrounds because it's just a bunch of lines. Like you don't really have to define that much as long as we know where the characters are. Yeah, that's kind of true. I had never thought about it at the time. Be sure to go up to the very edge of the paper 
because technically if you were to get it printed or anything like that, about half an inch maybe, maybe a little less of this page would be in danger of being cut off. So you want to extend it all the way. Don't want any random white gaps at the very edges. I think as far as inking goes, it's about it. I'll of course need to begin the arduous process of erasing all the pencil lines. Um, but as long as you go slow and don't try to audition for the Fast and the Furious, you should be okay. Just be patient and also make sure that your ink is completely dry. Now that we've had the fun experience of inking together, we are ready to start with our next step, which I've got actually a little surprise for you for, so make sure to catch the next video. See you next time.